Our guy, Captain Dave Hansen, with another phenomenal podcast for you today. Today, we got the boys in the room with us. We got Al from San Diego, Pablo from Mission Bay, and Justin from all over the world. All three of our guides are joining us today. It's going to be a great show. Kick back, relax, and get ready for a bunch of great information. And I want to thank Promar Ahi USA for supporting our show, supporting our channel, supporting our guides, supporting everything we do fishing. Promar, thank you very, very much for everything you do. Ben, Steve, Brian, thank you very, very much. Today we're going to be talking rockfish, gang. We got a week. We just got a week and uh season opens, but we got all kinds of weird stuff going on with this rockfish thing. So we got things to talk about. We got Al with us though, Clowers. He's and him and Pablo, they got a little bit different situation going on than we have up here in beautiful, sunny Southern California. Those guys can go down there and fish in Mexico where that country isn't run by a bunch of potato heads. So you can actually fish for rockfish down there and catch them and take them home and eat them. Not like what's going on up here in beautiful California. I cannot believe what's going on up here. We're going to talk about it today. We're going to talk about rockfish. We're going to talk about open charters. What's going on with Al and Pablo and Justin and all the great things they have ready for you guys. But we're also going to talk a little bit about politics because this whole closure thing is coming from one side and it's kind of sad, gang. And I guess what we got to stop doing is we got to stop vote, voting for parties. We got to stop start voting for reaction, I guess, because the reaction is really sad. What's going on? They want to shut down the ocean. They're on a they're on a mission to shut down fishing, period. Freshwater, saltwater, whatever water. And it's uh, I know I know that you hate that other guy and, and you'd rather destroy that everything than have that other guy run for be the be the guy in charge but gang we can't do that we got to stop shutting down fishing so we're going to talk a little bit about that today so if that bothers you this might not be the show for you because i only have truth that's all i can share gang and there's they're on a mission to stop fishing in the united states of america fresh our salt water and there's only one side that's doing that i'm not going to tell you what side because i think you all can figure that one out on your own but uh hey why don't we just get off of that topic because i don't want to lose everybody why don't we bring in al and justin and let's talk fishing today let's talk going fishing al welcome to the show justin welcome to the show welcome dave hello hello everyone i hope i didn't offend you too <laughs> no but i got no, the long color jacket on. i need a i need a red jacket <laughs> okay that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're looking awfully blue there, blue boy. You're looking awfully blue. The only reason I wear blue because it matches my eyes. Ah, there and you other go. Other than that, that's about it. Perfect. Well, I see Justin's <laughs> down on his boat. Where are you at, Al? At home? Yeah, I'm in my garage. I just got back from Marine Group <clears throat> dealing with All that right. other stuff. Okay. <clears throat> are you going to be able to go fishing here soon? Yeah, probably in uh, no longer than two weeks. Nice. That's good news. That's good yeah. news. Because, gang, if you take a look at windy.com, it is going to blow like crazy all the way through next weekend. I'm sorry mm -hmm. to fill you up with bad news, gang, but the wind is a blowing and it's blowing and it's blowing. And if you watch, go back and look at our archives and look at our game plans for. April, March and April last year and the year before and the year before and the year before, you're going to see April is always windy in Southern California. And this year it's going to be even windier with this El Nino that we have down here in Mexico <laughs> with all the warm water. And we're sucking all the energy out of California and sucking it down here to cool our water off. So we're going to have a lot of wind through the month of April. So just understand that. Don't you're just going to have to pay attention to windy.com and see what's going on. Justin, real quick, we're going to touch base with you real quick and then we'll touch base with Al. You got 
a phenomenal end of lobster season. It was epic. It was fun to watch. But now it's time to focus on rockfish. And Promar Ahi f- supplies us with some phenomenal tools to do the rockfish thing. And nothing better than these rock cod squirts. I mean, I've seen you post plenty of videos with these rock cod squirts hanging out of the fish's mouth. There he's, he's got a plethora of them. We'll get Al a bunch of these because it just makes so much Makes it so much easier, Al, than tying up those ganyans every time you leave the dock. You just un, you just unstrap one of these babies and put it on there, and it's ready to fish. Yeah, I have some. Um, I've been using them for years, but I'm not getting them through you guys or nothing. I just walk into Walmart and buy them. Okay, but well, now, you're. But now I can get me some, and my hands on a box for free. I don't know. I don't know. That's nothing free. You're going to have to give me some, you're going to have to give me some cool content, but Justin talk about these rock cod squirts and how much they mean to your success. So those of you that have seen the videos and pictures and everything of last year, when we caught millions of these rock fish, every single one of them were caught on these. When we go, um, in other areas from 350 feet or deeper, we're using the bigger rock cod squirts. So here's the original ones, and then here's the bigger ones. Um, but what we do is we we put on either a, a six ounce, or I don't go deep, so I don't use those pound and three pound weights. That's ridiculous to me. But um, I use a six ounce, eight ounce, maybe a 12 ounce every now and then, maybe um, sinker. Tie it to the end of these. There's a swivel that comes with it right on the end. You just attach your weight to there. You take the other side, which comes with another swivel. You attach it to your braided line. And you drop it all the way down to the bottom. We also put a squid strip on each of these hooks. Just one squid strip. Um, But it's a guarantee. We're going to catch rockfish with these. There's no, oh, we're going to drop down and maybe we'll catch something. No, we're going to catch rockfish. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We will catch them. So, but if you want those big reds and maybe a lean cod, I would highly recommend getting the bigger ones right here. Because for some reason, we found last year that these lean cod love these big ones. Love them. They just inhale these. So, yeah. Yeah, when you go out with Justin, you'll see. And then Al, Al's been doing it for a very long time. Right, Al, the difference between what you got going on and what we got going on here in Southern California, you get to go fish in Mexico. You get to fish that lower nine. That place is like, it's pretty much almost impossible to not catch a fish there if you know the spots, right? It's pretty right, fun. Right, right. The current current's your buddy down there. But yeah, it bites all the time there and down below that, you know? <laughs> Um, down around the islands, down by the rock pile. There's, I got a link called spot down by the rock pile. That's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I mean, as long as they have, as long as they have pa- pa- passports, I take them down there. Eighty percent of our rock cod trips are done down there. It just makes it much more enjoyable, much easier, right? You get away right. from the crowds, and you right. don't have to deal with all that crap. Right, right. And, you know, a little bit of yellowtail showing up too. So like on a three-quarter day, you don't have a lot of time, but you got enough time to look around. And then if you don't find the yellows, just go drop down and smash a bunch of rock cod. Yeah, I hear the king of the sonar out of the San Diego is <laughs> going to be running this week. So it could oh, yeah. open up a whole new plethora of fishing down there. I think that they've been catching <laughs> barracuda down in Ensenada for a couple of weeks already which is insane there's still yeah. bonita around so yeah, i think we, that's yeah we had a good splash of yellow show in there a couple of weeks ago down at the rock pile uh, under birds um you get a quick shot at them but the last four or five days they seem to disappear i don't know if all the mexican gill nets got what was coming up or not but they're they're marching up the line you know down in san Quentin, they're smashing them you know yeah, I think it's just consistent. We need some consistent weather. Right. I had a question come through here from one of our good buddies, John Stanley. The Grunion Run this week. The best days Grunion Run, when you're going to go down there and pick up those Grunion, is going to be the second and the third day. The first day, forget about it. The last day, it's too late. You don't. Who wants to go Grunion hunting at 2 o'clock in the morning? It's the best as the second and third day. Historically, that's what I found, and I made a living catch, using those things for bait, so... That's what I would tell you, John. And take three or four people with you now that you're only allowed 
to have 30, it's going to, you're going to need three or four people there to make it worth your while to go down there. It's just one of those silly limits. And speaking of silly limits, I don't know if you'd both, Al, you don't have to worry about it because you get to fish in Mexico, but Justin's got to worry about it. They're uh, doing it again. They took our vermilion rockfish from four down to two. But the way they did that was they got everybody all excited because they said they were going to open up these banks that haven't been fished in a very long time, like the 43 and the Cherry and the Osborne and and uh, let us start fishing on these places. But they just took, again, they took another fish. They're telling you you can go deeper. They're telling you you can do this. They're telling you you can do that. But they're taken away at the same time. So, yeah, those rock cod squirts, they make all of the difference in the world. No, uh, you can catch someone them. was that while you're talking, someone asked a question. So I just wanted to let see show them. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I see Josh's picture. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I see it. No, I thought you were just being <laughs> rude, trying to get me to shut up. No, no, so, no, no. We got a new regulation. You guys got to pay attention. You got to click pay close attention because the fish and wildlife is changing the regs like on the fly. The real regs haven't even come out yet, and we're a week away. We're a week away from opening Rockfish Day, and they don't even know. They don't even know. It's so weird, but they do know that we're only allowed two vermilions. They don't know if they're going to open up all these banks that haven't been opened. And they do know that although they opened up, or they may open up the banks, or they might not open the banks, or they will, or they won't, they don't know. I guarantee you they do know that they closed Rockfish a month earlier again this year. They closed it on the 16th of uh, August. So, like I said, gang, the number one thing you all have to do is you all have to get involved with CCA. So you can stay up on what's going on and you can have a say. The biggest problem is most of us are just totally unaware of what's going on out here. And a lot of people keep voting for the party instead of voting for the effect and the effect is what's destroying this country and destroying fishing. It's the effect gang. I don't, you got to quit voting party. It's time. All of you got to quit voting party and start voting effect. It's important. It's so important. I can't even imagine if we're down to two vermilions next year, it can easily be one or none. And that's just ridiculous. There's zillions of them. There are literally zillions of them, just like the grunion. If you've ever been to the beach and seen a grunion run, why in the world would they take it to 30? It's because they don't want us to fish, period. And you just got to be careful. I, I'm sorry. I know I'm being political, but you got to quit voting for party and start voting for effect gang. And it's super important now more than ever. I just can't even believe what's going on. So Al, as soon as your boat gets fixed, you got charters available. Are you going to start doing some open parties? How are you going to go around this opening? Cal the, cal the calendar will be wide open for charters. You know, I've tried to do the open parties in the past and it's, I just don't do them because it's so much office work and stuff. But um, I mean, if I get a big influx of people through here for open party stuff, yeah, I can put some dates up. But mainly, it's all charter. But yeah, the boat should be going uh, before two weeks. But I'm saying two weeks. I went down to the machine shop today and checked everything out. I got some video and some pictures for you. But uh, they're gonna have to make some of the parts, but. Um, um they're gonna make them right right here in chula vista so it's great that is awesome just to let everybody we got a lot of people watching a lot of people that weren't on last week when you were telling everybody what happened just give them a quick scenario of what happened and what what the damage ended up being because i know you're out of the water now and on the heart right right so what happened was <clears throat> i was getting ready to get to a spot so i was only going seven knots it was low light rough conditions i was paying attention to bird activity in my meter and uh, I probably wouldn't have seen it anyway. And we got a two inch rope stuck in the in, in all my gear, my props and my struts and my rudders. And we we're dead in the water. So make a long story short, I got a pond over there to cut us out. I got everybody back safe and uh, hauled it out. And the damage was I need two new shafts. Both the props um, went in, they're bent. 
so they need to be fixed and they need to make two new rudders and the struts they're going to be able to straighten them so about thirty-five thousand dollars later i'll be back in action in about two weeks wow thank I god can... for insurance right right so if anybody's listening on here that's got a a single inboard or a double screw i highly recommend i've always carried um snorkel a mask and stuff but we jump we jump water temperature was six or 58 degrees so it was cold and uh, we jumped in bare bones with the mask and we didn't have enough air supply to stand there enough to cut it out so i had to get i thought real quick and got one, a hold of one of the ponga guys he sent a ponga for he got there in an hour um great guys really awesome to help me but i highly recommend you have a wetsuit snorkel and fins and you can go on Amazon or wherever and um, search for those little uh, temporary air bottles. So I ordered up the bigger one. It'll I, I can stand there 15 to 20, 20 minutes um, in within 15 uh, feet of the surface. So I have that. I even bought a little. It came with a pump, but I went over there to pump pump it up, and I, <laughs> I got tired too quick. <laughs> so I ordered I ordered a bitchin' little compressor for two hundred bucks off of, off of Amazon too. That is specifically designed to fill that bottle, so I don't have to take it to the dive shop or nothing. And I can put it on the boat. So if we need to need, need more than fifteen minutes, we can just fill it up right on the boat. So that's super super important. I'm a super safe guy, and I have everything I need. But that day, I didn't have a, I didn't have air, so so it was either wait for the tow boat or think real quick, get into Baja mode, and find a pongo to cut us out. And that's what happened. But I've been doing this all my life, and I've slid over ropes at the last minute in neutral, you know, maybe three or four times in a lot of years. And then this one, you know, it happened so fast that it happens. You know, to the best guys that try to do all their due diligence to have all the right stuff on the boat and not not have it happen to them, but but it happens. So make sure you have all your safety gear and you look at it and you, you know how to use it. Yeah, it's a good one to know. Hey, I wanted to let you know, and Justin's going to talk about this right now, Al. The really cool thing about what Justin and Pablo were able to pull off last season was doing these last minute. Let's just say, let's say Al's got. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, booked up, Saturday booked, nothing on Sunday. He, these guys, Justin and Pablo, they were able to take and throw together open party trips and take four guys out at a time. And it opened a boat up to show the people what Justin and Pablo do. And then the next thing you know, the guys were chartering their boats. So it's a different thing it opens it up it's not like you're going to be out there scrambling trying to find four guys we have guys we have a lot of people watching the show we have a lot of members of the website and a lot of them are friends you'll be blown away i know you you're in there looking at the community every day and you're seeing there's a lot of love in this this uh right. it's different it's a different animal than you and i have ever seen you and i have been in this industry and so has justin since we were young and the the industry wasn't very loving right. and that's the difference between us and them is right. we're a different animal here we got a bunch of people that love each other justin kind of talk about that because you had i don't know how many let's we know how many lobsters you caught but how many trips did you run and pablo just joined us so so just for lobster i think it was 68 trip yeah. <laughs> it was a lot a lot that is and, insane. That's, and, and that's not including me going out on other people's boats because that's a whole different log that's a different log for fishing game i don't do it on the charts on the cpv charts on on your phone um that's a different a whole different animal right there so but yeah 68 i believe 68 trips on my boat which is pretty phenomenal it was pretty cool Oh yeah, that's, that's really cool. Insane. That's insane. I want to answer help. a question really quick that someone someone asked, Randy. Um, so, don't be surprised if you're a hundred miles offshore and fishing game just pull up on your bow without you even looking, because they will do it. Trust me, they will do it. It doesn't matter if you're at the forty three. It doesn't matter if you're at Tanner Bank. It doesn't matter if you're at the Cortez, the four ninety nine. 
the 209, San Clemente Island, Santa Barbara, anywhere. They will they will sneak up on you guaranteed without you even knowing. And they do it all the time. Trust me. So absolutely. Pablo, welcome to the show, buddy. Pablo. Thanks for flying in. Oh, I know you were busy guys. this morning. Miley, thanks uh, for being Miley here. Just, yeah, thanks, Cap. Miley just got her driver's license. So now she took off. So she's gonna have a fun day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right justin back to what you were talking about as, as far as uh all those trips and everything all of a sudden out of nowhere you start yeah so, charters right yeah it was pretty spectacular and not only that just like you mentioned dave you build a relationship with these open party guys and gals and they start booking your boat they will book your boat out or if they have boats they'll book you to go on their boat and it happened to me for instance, Tut. Tut came with me four or six times over lobster season. And another guy named James. James came with me twice, and I came on his boat twice. So it, it's pretty cool. Really cool. I would yeah. highly recommend. I just wanted Al to, to hear that because this is a weird thing, Al, and you and I, man, coming from the, we just don't get it. We, it took me a long time to figure it out that the love, that the caring, that the people, basically us as fishermen, we just want to be with people that have the same feeling about it that we do. And it's tough to find that group of people. So when you can get three or four people that are members of your saltwater guide, that'll go with Pablo on his boat, all of a sudden you're like, you're fishing with a bunch of family members. It just blows your mind, Al. It just, yeah. it'll blow your mind. And just, our Pablo, hasn't that been your, ex I mean, I see all the pictures and all the posts. Everybody is having so much fun. It's fun. They don't even have to catch anything. I mean, you had, you had some good days. You had some bad days. Justin yeah, yeah. had some really bad days. I mean, the last couple nights, <laughs> you've been, the guys had a ball. They caught five lobsters, three lobsters, but they had a ball because, Everybody enjoys it so much. It's a different <laughs> animal, right? This open party thing. It's not like the normal open party, right, Pablo? No, and, and that's the thing. It's like you try to, you know, you just do the open parties for your saltwater members and it always works out. Like they always they always mesh, you know, everybody's cool. Everybody everybody understands fishing. They understand you're not always gonna get full list of everything, although that's what we all strive for. That's our goal, right? If anybody thinks that we're not trying and we're not throwing everything at it, well, let me tell you, we're trying as hard as we can because there's nothing worse than us feeling like we left something out there that you should have had. Uh, we try very, very hard and work very diligently to, to hook up. But having said that, yeah, um, sometimes you don't do as good as other times and that's fishing, but we love working with each other. Justin helps me out all the time. Um, as far as, uh, you know, help me out with certain spots or certain techniques and we all, all work together. Now that we have Captain Al on board, um, Al and I have been touching base a little bit and it's just amazing. The community is so awesome and truly feel like I have friendships now, Justin was saying from this community. And that's because of what you provided for us, Captain Dave, and, you know, everybody just just being a part of this great community that there's nothing else like it. Yeah, man. Hey, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. You know, too bad I had that incident, but yeah, I, I totally see what's going on and, and it's really cool. Like when I get my repeat clients, you know, same with the your saltwater guide family, it's the same feeling, you know, where no pressure, good times, you know, and when the fish bite, we're going to smoke them, you know? <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's going to be so fun. And then having you doing these phenomenal reports of back Bay and in the Harbor, San Diego Harbor. I mean, Pablo covers mission Bay. Like, like he's lived there his whole life. The reports that you've given us the whole season, lobster fish and Pablo, those things were spot on. So many people had so much fun and I'm already getting nothing but phenomenal reviews, Al, from all of the information that you're sharing. Right. It, the people are eating it up gang if you're not a member of our website and you watch the podcast every day 
don't be afraid. I will give you an absolutely free look. You can go in there and look around at the website. Check it all out. Talk to all the members. Talk to Jeanette. Talk to James. Talk to Darren. Talk to uh, Tim Ogilvy. Talk to all the people that are on here every day talking about it. Because they're all members and they're all posting over there. It's the craziest. It doesn't make sense. Like I keep saying, to me, I help build that lack of information sewer that we call the sport fishing industry. I was right there in the middle of it. And if we got <laughs> caught sharing with any of you, we were kicked out of the club. If my dad found out I was, oh, he would have knocked my front teeth out in the be in the beginning that I'm sharing information. He had nine sport boats. We weren't allowed to share, gang. And now we're all sharing. It's a totally different world. We, we all have to be in this mode because they're trying to close every single thing. Right. Yeah, and I don't want to live in that world. You're right. Hey, when I'm when I'm doing all these videos, I'm looking over my shoulder still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Don't worry. They all still hate me. I'm just gathering you guys' information and posting it. But it's all Dave's fault. It's all Dave's fault. Definitely. When they get down, when they get to a spot and there's a boat at it already that they thought they own the spot and they can't figure out how one of our members is already there right it sorry gang but you want to go check it out those of you that aren't on the website check it out for free i'll give you a free look i promise and then the other thing is those of you that are watching on youtube hit the share button and hit the like button it matters so much that i had no idea how important those things were and then i wanted to say something that's going to blow everyone's mind this weekend on Facebook, we hit 280,000 followers. Damn. On YouTube, we hit 70,000 subscribers. It's all happened this weekend. On Instagram, we hit 75,000 followers. And on TikTok, we hit 120,000. That's Those are like wow. pretty spectacular numbers for a dumb old fisherman guy. I'm blown away. <laughs> I'm blown away. So we're doing something right. So, Pablo, you got anything set up if the wind ever stops blowing? Oh, no, you were out fishing the last couple days. <laughs> Tell us about that. The oh, rest man. of us are way too smart okay. to go out there. What were you doing? So, okay, so Friday was actually really fun. Friday, we did really good. I took this really cool little group of dad and his two sons, and we whacked them good at La Jolla. You know, we didn't, we had a good shot at some yellowtail, but they were up and down pretty quick, but we got everything else. And um, we loaded them up pretty good. They were happy. And the next day, these guys were supposed to show up at 8 o'clock. And then they're like, hey, how can we show up at 9? I'm like, I'm down here working on the boat. So, yeah, just get down here as quick as you can. And I let them know the storm is coming. You guys better get here. We're not going. And so they finally ended up, you know, begging me to be able to go at 10. I'm like, yeah, okay, well, that's it. I said, I'm going to start shutting down if you guys aren't here. So they show up at like 1030. We pushed off about 11 and man, it got ugly out there. Like it was fine all morning. And then as soon as they showed up, it just turned a complete snot out there. And <laughs> we made a push for La Jolla because we're like, oh, the wind's going to change to west. Well, <laughs> it didn't. And we were, we were out of La Jolla and then we were trying to come back and we were coming back safely and all that. But man, the rain was coming from every direction. There was white caps everywhere. Totally, totally brutal. And the wind never changed to west until after we got back to the dock and then it came straight west. And I was like, man, that would have been nice an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we had we had a good fun time. Great bunch of people. They were still super stoked. They didn't complain once. They had a blast. Um, we didn't get a really good fish count. And as a matter of fact, we ended up catching one big spotty <laughs> right at the dock before they left right there at the dock and i was just laughing at that man we should have just stayed at the dock the whole time but it was ugly it was ugly out there yes it was i couldn't even believe it when you called me and told me you were going out i was like all right well great well we love you man we're gonna yeah. miss you I, know. I warned them i'm like you guys no i'll give you all your money back we don't have to go they're like no we're going no matter what i'm like oh, okay man but they were from, some people were from Indiana and some people were from Ohio. So they were wearing t-shirts and shorts and they were fine. I offered them rain gear. 
didn't want it. They were fine. It's crazy. Wow. <laughs> I'd have been freezing to death. Oh, hey, one second. One second, you guys. Hold on a second. One of my really good old buddies, longtime friend, he's on here watching right now. Now I know I'm huge. Lonnie Brothers is watching. Oh, my gosh. You know you made it to the big time when Lonnie Brothers is watching. <laughs> Anybody that's in, into surfing, you guys know who Lonnie Brothers is. Lonnie is a superstar surfer, really great human being, really good friend. Lonnie, thank you for watching our show today. I'm really, now I know I made it to the big time. We got Lonnie Brothers watching. So, gang, we're going to just kind of chit-chat with Pablo and Justin and, and Al about rockfish fishing and what they think that we're going to be looking at this year. Also, gang, I'm going to tell you something. This has the makings for a 1983 El Nino. And if you don't know what that was, start to talk to some of the old timers. That was the most unbelievable thing we'd ever seen. I know we've had some El Ninos. We had the 2015 one where you, most of you got into fishing then, but in since 83, there hasn't been a real solid El Nino where we could just go out three, four miles off the beach, throw the feathers in the water, get a jig strike on yellowfin and sink the boat and get three or 400 and not have to drive around all day in your gyros. In 83, it was insane. There was no private boaters back then. I was running sport boats. I looked like a superhero. That's what this looks like. Right now, where I live in Cabo San Lucas, the water's 75 right now. It's March. Usually, the water's 66, 67 right now. We're catching yellowtail. We've got insane rooster fish fishing. Insane rooster fish fishing off the beach or off the boat. Really good striper fishing. Good stripe marlin fishing. A lot of tuna on the outside and Dorado. And they're not little rat Dorado, Al. These are qualified. These are San Diego 30 pounders, Cabo 12 to 15 pounders. It's uh <laughs> it's really, really, really insane. And I believe this mass massive amount of fish is headed to Southern California. If you looked at what Mike Pritchard did on the tribute, he's catching yellowfin tuna with that blue fin. And right. he's, they're not little ones. These are 45, 50, 60 pound yellowfin. This is going to be the most incredible year. So if you don't get on, <coughs> if you don't charter Al's boat, I mean, Justin, we don't have to worry about you. You're going to be booked up. We don't even really need to talk <laughs> about you anymore. But if you don't get on Al or Pablo's boat soon and get some trips booked up. And I'm saying when this show is over, you need to be calling Al or Pablo or Justin, and you need to get on these trips because they're going to book up like you can't even believe and if you're going to wait oh, i'm going to wait and see what happens well then it's going to be way too late you're not going to get on the boat. frank lepresti was on let's talk hookup yesterday and he was talking and he said if you want to start planning a trip for 2025 you should probably start looking into it now because <laughs> he's already booked up for 2024 that's a big deal the Royal Polaris is booked solid. He doesn't have any openings till 2025. Well, that's how all the other sport boats are getting right now. So you want to get out on this fish and do something spectacular? I would start booking now and <coughs> do a couple rockfish trips with Al and Pablo and Justin and go see what their operation's like and see what the boat is like and then go fish and go watch this thing. I mean, our good friend John Stanley and his wife Tina, they've been fishing for a long time. They wanted, Tina wanted to catch a Dorado. That's all she wanted. So they went with Pablo, even though they have their own boat. They went with Pablo. What happened, Pablo? No, no I, I took them on their boat. Oh, you went with them on their boat. Yeah, so that was, that was, uh, so I took them on a guide trip on their boat. They have a beautiful boat. It's right across the way from my boat, same marina and everything. And we went down there. I checked it out like a week before or something. I gave them a little punch list of, two correct and then wish list items kind of a thing did nice good safety inspection um tina said that's all she wants to do is catch a dorado and i said look i i can't guarantee that but i'm gonna i'm gonna guarantee it today because i was out yesterday so i know a general area where they are if you guys are willing to go the distance i i 100 guarantee you i'm gonna get one now that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself but <laughs> you know when you, you know, so I was hoping, I was hoping that I was going to be at least 50% right. 
but we headed out and they're like, oh man, we've, we've never been out this far. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, we're not even close to there. We're going to keep going. They're like, how far are we going? Are we going? I'm like, well, how much fuel do you guys have? And, and I'm like, what's your range? And I'm like, oh yeah, don't worry about it. We're fine. So we cruise, we start past the nine mile bank. They've never been out that far. We pass the 43, pass the corner and got out to, you know, a secret spot out there <laughs> and we passed all the boats and they're like, oh, all the boats are here. All the fleets here. I'm like, yeah, they're, they're plunker fishing for yellowfin and bluefin. Don't worry about them. We want Dorado. And then we put out our trollers. We started getting a hit on two of them. Then we put out a third one and then we played with one, brought it to the boat. Uh, Tina, she caught the first one. She gave it a nice kiss right on the mouth. I have a picture of that. And then we caught uh, 38 more. And then she caught the last one. She caught the 40th one. And it was it was pretty funny. I mean, we were like a, the fat lady sitting on the suitcase trying to smash them into the fish holds and filled up their little kill bag, which I think he upgraded to a Deckhand Sports ones now. But um, yeah, we had everything full. And like you said, sinking the boat with, with little guys, you know, a couple good ones. But man, it was all within an hour. And these things didn't leave our boat for... We, we drifted and had lunch and even jumped in the water out there because it's so beautiful. And they stayed with the boat for the rest of the time. And there was no other boats around. And we came home. Yeah. And the reason I wanted Pablo to tell you all that story is because I know you're sitting there. It's kind of a cold day. It's kind of been windy and crappy. But you close your eyes. You think about that. Weather so beautiful. Dorado biting everywhere. Jump in the water. The water was in the 80s. It's just... That's what you're going to be looking at this summer, gang. And if you do not call Al or Justin or Pablo now and get on their list and get in, you're going to be super sad. You're going to be watching this from the sidelines like a lot of people had to do as far as hoop netting goes. We kept telling you and telling you and telling you. And then, I mean, the last two days, you guys both ran full. And Al, he, he would have been running full too, but his boat right. broke. But right. Al, tell us. There's a bunch of people that haven't heard your story. That we got. Hey, Will. Will's with us. Will, how you doing? Justin loves you, man. He thinks you're the greatest. I don't really like you at all. You know that. <laughs> no, it's good to see you on here, Will. We got all the superstars watching us today. Justin, crazy. Al, how do they get a trip with? I know. You I'll be with Will. I'll be with Will on Wednesday. What are you guys doing Wednesday? On Wednesday, we'll be at Bass Pro Shop. The no. grand opening. If you're there on Wednesday, you'll be helping them put stock on the shelves and stuff. Oh, is it Wednesday or Thursday? Thursday, <laughs> knucklehead. <laughs> is it the 27th? I don't know. It's Thursday, though. I got it right here because the guys are going to be on the show tomorrow. Oh, Thursday is well, the grand opening of Bass Pro Shop. But if you guys want to help stock the shelves, just <laughs> be there on Wednesday. Him and Will will be stocking shelves. You can help them. Oh. On Thursday, you guys can go to the grand opening. <laughs> and, you know, oh, we see, just even Will said. Fun. Even Will said it's Wednesday. I told you, grand opening is Wednesday, 6 p.m. Wednesday night. Yeah, That's Wednesday like at 6 p.m. Right, it's well, almost Thursday. Right? That's just like a Thursday. If you ever been to my right. seminar, I told you the seventies were gnarly on me. <laughs> all right, let's go backwards. Forget about all that bull. Hey, Al, do you want to tell them about your starter business and your boat and all that stuff so people can book some trips? We're gonna give phone numbers out, gang. Those of you driving around in your cars, get ready. This is gonna be how you can get a hold of Pablo, Justin, and Al. Because man. I want you to have an opportunity to fish with one of these three guys. So we're going to start giving out some phone numbers. Al's coming out of San Diego. Pablo's coming out of Mission Bay. And Justin's coming out of Long Beach Harbor. And if you want to get out on a trip and have the trip of your lifetime, regardless of the fish, just having a great time out on the water. Here we go, Al. Go. So, yeah, um, I'm running a 36-foot 2000 Riviera. It's a beautiful boat, side scan sonar, the whole nine. Everybody loves the boat. Been doing it for a long time. And the best way to get a hold of me is you can call me direct at 619-800-FISH. So that's 619-800-3474. 
or you can go to my site, uh, captainclowers.com. I got an auto booking calendar in there. Just pick what area you want to inshore, offshore, bay, um, and follow the prompts and I'll book you all up and get you on the calendar. Right now we have some really prime dates, but the, it's not going to last very long. So um, I would say book ahead for sure. Like I said, uh, family operation, very highly reviewed and lots of repeat clients and uh, we do a really good job. So I'm looking forward to uh, having some of the members on the boat and uh, let it manifest from there to their friends and family and everything else. So I'm really looking forward to a really good season. So we're ready. So All right. One more time. Slowly phone number. <laughs> <laughs> 619-800-3474. If you forget, the 3474 is fish. <laughs> oh, nice. Perfect. There you go. That's how long he's been doing it. He was able to grab that phone number. 619-800-FISH. That's pretty insane. And Justin, I apologize from the bottom of my heart. You're absolutely a thousand percent correct. Why I was talking, I looked it up. You and Will will be there Wednesday night at 6 o'clock for the grand opening. So. <laughs> Captain Dave was yeah. wrong. It doesn't happen very often, and it's very <laughs> rare for me to even tell somebody that I was wrong. So that's a big day today. Big, big day. Justin, how do we find you? What do We We want to go fishing with you. We want to go catch some of those blue fish. We had over 100 last year of those big blue fish. Yep. So if you'd like to get on a trip, I only have between July and September, I only have maybe three to five days a month available now. Either I'm coming on your boat or you come on mine. Um, but if you want to get on or want me to come on your boat, you need to let me know right away because I'm going to book up within the next 15 to 20 days. I guarantee it. So my phone number is 951-703-9442. Um, I'm all, you can call or text me. I'm also doing next week, which is the third and fourth. I'm going to be doing open parties for rockfish. We can either stay local, which is $200 per person. I need four to go. Um, or we can go to Catalina at $300 per person and I need four to go. So rockfish, April 3rd and 4th. Um, the other days I have booked up so far. And then in a couple of weeks, I'll let you know when I'm available again. But yeah, give me a call or text 951-703-9442. And then uh, they can see you and Will at Bass Pro Shops on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. And uh, uh -huh. that's the grand opening of the first <laughs> ever Bass Pro Shops in Orange County, California. And as you guys saw, those of you that came to the Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Show, when you go inside the orange curtain, it's a whole different world. There's a lot of uh, people that are voting for cause instead of party there. And there's a lot of money there. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of hoopla. Everybody loves to fish and nobody wants to close anything. So I don't think Bass Pro is quite ready for what's about to happen. Opening up a store inside the orange curtain. It's going to be pretty insane to see. We're pretty excited about it. And then Justin and Will will be there representing Promar. Promar is going to have a huge presence there. It's going to be a great show. And today's show is sponsored by Promar Ahi. So, Justin, is uh, Ben and Steve going to be there with you guys? Yes. So, everybody at Promar is going to be there with us. Um, Will and myself were the special guests at um, Bass Pro Shop. Um, but yeah, there's going to be a phenomenal amount of Promar product there. So if you're looking for a rock cod squirts, you're looking for jigs for the bluefin, you're looking for any stuff that Promar makes at all, you want to prepare yourself for next season for a lobster, all that stuff's going to be there at a phenomenal price. And Arnie's asking, where so, is it in, in Orange County? It's in it's in Irvine. It's the old um, Walmart building. They did, they gutted it and built the Bass Pro shop. It's not a two story Bass Pro. It's a single story. It's a little different than their normal stores. Justin, do you know exactly where it is? Um, I, I'd have to look in my phone and my phone's occupied, but um, right. I don't know the address. If you if you just Google Bass Pro Shop Irvine, it'll give you the exact address. And the grand opening is at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. 
Now, are oh, they're going to be able gonna to be. There's going to be a ton of prizes too. Um, Bass Pro is giving out a ton of prizes from gift certificates or gift cards and tackle, all kinds of really cool stuff. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be really cool. Yeah, I got the address. It's it's 71, 71 Technology Drive, Irvine, California. So, yeah, Arnie, that's right there by the Y. Technology Drive is pretty much like an off-ramp north of the Y. So, yeah, you're pretty dang close to it. It's going to be easy to find. It's going to be mayhem, though. They're not even – they don't even – they do so much – fresh water but they're going to have a giant salt water section and i don't think they're quite ready for what's about to happen it's going to be absolutely insane it's going to be like disneyland for us we all know that just going to that store so it, they're in store for something really spectacular to happen and it's cool that it's going to be there all the time because there's many times you're going up and down that 5 405 freeway and you just want to belt get off the side of the road and grab something and I know that we support a lot of really great tackle stores. We do. And and I'm not taking away from any of my friends that own tackle stores, but Bass Pro Shop, let's face it, it's got every single thing you could ever want from phenomenal clothes, boats, and uh, phenomenal fishing tackle. I know Okuma is going to have a big presence in there too. I was talking to Dave Brown. They got a big, big uh, space inside there. Pablo? What sure. if we want to go fishing with you? How are we going to figure that one out? Do you got um, any dates available? Yeah, I have some dates available, but we're booking up pretty quick. Um, FernandezCharters.com. You can check out everything there and definitely give me a phone call and I'll slow it down because I always say it too fast. 619-431-3070. 619-431-3070. And we're just expanding further and further out. And um, yeah, rock fishing is right around the corner, but it's always year round fishing. Justin knows, ask anybody that's ghost fishing with him. We fish year round here and it's been good. It's been a little weather dependent. You don't want to go out like on the Saturday that I went out, but um, most other times we can, we can find something. Um, Al's obviously got the San Diego Harbor completely wired. So we can do any kind of trips inside, outside, way offshore, way down South, whatever. And then one thing that's really nice about Pablo and Justin and Al being a part of the team now is we come back on Mondays because the weekend's always crazy for all these guys. But we'll, we, they'll be checking in with us on Mondays and we'll be letting you know what their week looks like. So if Al has a has an opening and he wants four of you to get together, like we do with Justin and Pablo, Al will definitely be putting those trips together. He understands the need and the desire for all of you to get out fishing. And then as soon as Al tells you that that back bay is biting, you want to go, you want to get with them. You want to get them on your boat or you want to get them. You want to get with right, him good. on his. Hey, how are you today? That's the right. <laughs> good, good. Thank you for letting us borrow your husband for a few minutes. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it is. We appreciate it. It's a lot of fun for him, so it's good. Well, good, Marty. I just saw my monkey running around, so he must have known you were coming on the show. He's just running oh, around back there. <laughs> okay, guys, have fun. Thank you. Bye. So, so what I was trying to say is as soon as Al, on his reports on the Thursday game plans, tells you it's time to go bonefish fishing, Gang, people fly all over the world to catch a bonefish all over the world. You're going to get on. You're going to take your boat, go launch it where Al tells you to meet him. And he's going to take you on your boat and go show you how to catch a bonefish in San Diego. And you'll be sleeping in your own bed at night. That's pretty insane. Yeah. Absolutely. It's getting ready to pop. So water temps are still a little cold, but, um, as soon as we get rid of these little storms, I'd say a couple of weeks of some hot weather, it's going to be, it's going to be rocking. And gang, we're not trying to get you all fired up for something that isn't going to happen. This is happening. Like Pablo said, it's year round. Pablo, Justin, Al, when they go fishing, and Al's just not a master at the bay. Although that's a huge thing to be a master of. 
but he's an offshore guy. He's an inshore guy, yellowtail, Dorado, bluefin, whatever it is. If it swims or crawls, Al can kill them all. And <laughs> same right. with, same with Justin and Pablo. Offshore. Because no here's the deal. Here's my commitment to all of you. We have over 680,000 followers across social media. We have over 440. Right now, we have 4,285 members of our website. I have to make sure that my guys are the guys that are going to make sure. We don't have any. You can Google your saltwater guide. You can Google it. You can check it out. If there's anything that's not real, believe me, that booger-eating haters would be all over the Internet talking crap. There isn't any crap about any of us. There's a bunch of haters for me, but that's just part of the deal. I've been hated by the industry for many, many years. Now the industry loves me for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm dragging 680,000 people around with me now. But um, gang, these guys are the real deal. They're the real deal. I'm <laughs> super stoked to have Al join the team. You already know Pablo and Justin are the real deal. And then we have Sonny with us up in Southern Cal, or up in uh, the Channel Islands, who's a plethora of knowledge up there. There is nothing. There is nothing like what we're doing available on anything anywhere there is nothing like it and you know what's cool when you call justin justin who answers the phone when they call you rylan uh no, justin, no um some person walking down the street <laughs> no, i'm just kidding i answer the phone i answer it every time well unless i'm unless i'm offshore or i'm on the water or i'm talking to another client but yeah, for the majority of the time, I answer it. Or I'll get back to you. And Al, who answers the phone when they call you? I do. Pre that, pre predominantly, yeah. Yep. It's pretty strange. And when Pablo gets a phone call, he answers it, right, Pablo? Yes, sir. Otherwise, <laughs> I get your phone call. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when I, get, when I get really busy, and if I'm out of cell service or whatever, the wife will answer it. Oh, perfect. And everybody knows my phone numbers on every bathroom wall in America. So you just call me when you can't get a hold of these guys. The reason you can't get a hold of one of these guys is because they're out there fishing. But when they get back in, they're going to let you know. But you call me and I'll tell you what they're doing. I'll tell you what's going on. That's our commitment to being members of the website. Dan and Kim, do you guys, do I answer the phone when you guys call? Steve Duncan, do I answer the phone? Doug? Jeanette? Does Captain Dave answer the call? Gang, I got 60, I got 4,200 members and I answer the call. And you know what my favorite thing is, Al, when they answer, the, when they go, uh, what? It's you. And I'm like, yeah, this is the best part of answering the phone is when they just get, they're like, I, I, I can't believe you answered the phone. That's my favorite part. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> They're not going anywhere now. They understand the power of your saltwater guide. We talk to all of our members. We want you to be as successful. We do. We just want you to be as successful because if you're successful, there's a good chance that we can work together and keep this fishing thing open. It's so important to me right now to keep fishing open. I talk about it every day on my show because we are under attack from every angle that you can imagine. When they took our grunion away, I could not even believe that one. I was like, oh, my gosh, there's no way. I read an article a couple of days ago about that. They saw a couple of boats in the middle of the winter this year that were catching sand dabs. And now they're 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 trying to put together something to take away our sand. Dab. It's just the most unbelievable thing. As soon as they find out you're having fun and you're smiling and you're doing something you like, they want to close it down. And it's only one side, gang. It's just one side. So stop voting party and start voting reality. Start, start voting for, a rea for the reaction. Don't vote for the party anymore, gang. Those days are long gone. It does not work. Look at what's going on in New York and San Francisco and those, those are people that voted party, and that's not working out too good for them anymore, gang. Unless you're into them giving all of our money to these people that never put a dime into the system. I'm sorry. I'm just at a point where it's, we're at a boiling point now. <sighs> yeah, you know, all that stuff affects it us. It is getting man. very ridiculous. It all affect, it affects us big time, you know, because all those 
people that come in from out of town that have the kids that want to just go fish locally and stuff like that. Things are shut down. Then we got to go look for sand bass and sculpin and stuff like that. I mean, it's, I mean, I've been here all my life. I've seen it full circle. And when I think about it, it just makes me sick, you know? <clears throat> for no reason at all. It's, there's yeah. no reason for them to close any of this. Right. And then the CCA stuff, yeah. you know, I'm not rich or nothing, but I, you know, I give them the 40 bucks and then I give them 20, I give them pledge 20 bucks a month automatically. You know, if, if, if people can do that, I mean, 20 bucks, I spend that just from what time I wake up to eight o'clock, you know, for nothing. So, um, they were talking about that pledge. So if you can pledge five, 10, 15, 20 bucks a month, besides all these millions of people, you know, it'll, get, it'll give them more power to combat this stuff. Yeah, I'm just going to throw the QR code up on the screen, gang. Those of you that don't understand, ccacalifornia.org is our only voice at the table. They're not going to let Dave Hansen go into a meeting, I promise. They already tried that a couple times, and I just disrupted the whole meeting because I don't sit there on my hands and wait for my turn to talk. I don't know if you've ever seen me, but I'm not about waiting for my turn. And when I hear the rhetoric, I just can't stand it, but... We need people like Wayne Coda and Chris and, and Mike Lum and people with that are a little calmer and a little mellower and they can bring it down and speak for us. And that's where CCA California comes into play. That's why it's super important to be involved, gang. If you're getting sick of watching what the hell's going on, it's time to quit voting for the side that's causing all this, gang. You got to quit voting party. I know orange man bad. I know that. I see it every flipping day. I know that. But you know what's going on? America bad right now. It's it's a it's the worst. I can't even comprehend. I just did my taxes. I just pay. I just found out. Uh, and uh, they're giving it all to these people that never paid a penny. And it doesn't make sense to me, gang. And then every time I look around, they want to close fishing again. If you guys keep closing fishing, guess what? You're not going to get any of my tax money to pay for all these other people that don't belong here. You're just not. It's just crazy. I don't understand it. I don't know. What do you want me to do? I All I all I know how to do is fish. You take away the fishing thing and all we got, all our members, we got to wake up. We got to wake up, America. You got to remove head from rectum. It's time. This is it. We're at the end. I don't know if you can see what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, but this is pretty scary times. And I can't say the word because I don't want to get banned, but I mean, we got to wake up. It's it's time. It's time. I don't want to get banned. I don't want to get banned. I really don't. <sighs> Sorry. It just it, it's blowing my mind. And my poor dad, thank God he's not here. His head would explode. This is just the craziest time to be living in America. I don't know why it were. I just don't get it. I don't know why we want to close fishing. Every person, every one of the people, Pablo, Al, Justin, all my guests that I bring on, they all tell a story about how they got into fishing because somebody took them fishing when they were a little kid. Can you imagine that we could, that can go away in less than 10 years? We're so close. We are so close to it going away forever. The new 30 by 30 thing that's coming down the pipe, all these different things, gang. That's why I try to do this show every single day. And people go, oh, Dave, you did it for money. Nope. I did this show for two years, every single day, five days a week for two years and never got paid a penny, never got a penny. Now, yeah, we got sponsors helping us out with the show, but you know what? I'm just that passionate about fishing and it matters so much to me. And I, that's why I invited Pablo, Justin and Al to be a part of my website and be a part of this because I need help. I need guys like these guys that care about fishing as much as I do. Because this is super important, gang. And if you don't remove your head from your rectum, if you vote for the wrong party, this is it. It's over. It's going to be gone forever and ever and ever. And you're going to think back to the day in 2014 on a Monday when you were listening to us talk. And you're going to go, he was right. And it was gone in five years. It's gone. It's so close to being gone right now. You can't even understand, gang. Whew. Sorry. What, what about if it was I, I make some really stupid comments sometimes. <laughs> I make some uh, really stupid comments sometimes. And you know when you bring a fish on the deck, it's red, not blue, right? No, I'm just kidding here. So um, <laughs> when everyone, everyone's been asking me. Um, everyone's been asking me about the live shows. So there's some 
technical difficulties on the live shows out on the water. The number one thing is going to be um, Starlink. Starlink for us to go live on the water is a phenomenal amount of money. And the live shows are only bringing in maybe three to five dollars a month. Starlink is costing it's twenty five hundred dollars to buy the equipment, and then it's a thousand dollars a month for one terabyte of data. If it works, if it's going to work. So we're we're Dave and I are getting together and we're trying to figure out some way to do this. And either way, it's going to happen. Um, so we're gonna go live hopefully sooner than later, maybe next week. If I stay local out here, I'll go live. Or if I stay on one side of Catalina, I'll go live. Um, but yeah, I've got so many messages, like hundreds, literally hundreds of messages asking, when am I going live next? When am I going live next? So that's the answer, shortened. Um, we're, we just got to figure out some technical stuff. And I also, if we're going to go live, instead of hiding or everyone looking at my nose, which is not very a beautiful sight, um, I'd rather you see the whole deck and what's going on, right? You, everyone wants to see what's going on. So I, I'm looking at getting a different camera that can hook up to a Wi-Fi source, which can be up on the top deck, up on the bridge. And it'll look out over the deck while everyone's fishing. And, what, and you can see the whole, you can see people hooking up on fish. You can see the boils going on. You can see fish swimming by. You can see what exactly is going on. So those are the technical things that we're going through right now, but it'll be sooner than later. I promise we will be going live. Yeah. I'm just looking for some sponsors to help us out with that. If you saw what happened with Promar and you saw, they told Justin that this was their best year ever for selling equipment. And I guarantee you, it, it was a direct correlation to Justin's live hoop net trips, catching over 2000 lobsters, but, turning on a whole bunch of people to to this fishing thing, to this lobstering thing. We had people watching all over the world. If you went and looked at our um, our demographics for where the people were tuning in at, we had people in Australia, New Zealand, New York, Panama, um, Africa, watching the live shows, and not just once, but day in and day out. And we turned so many people onto this lobster thing. They had no idea. People didn't know how much fun it was. Then the next thing you knew, Justin didn't have any days. And then Pablo was just getting bombarded with people because they wanted to go. And, and then, you know, next year it's going to be even better. And we're going to have Pablo, Justin, and Al. And Al, I know you're old and you're going to have to be hooping. Hey, I've, I've, I've done them for years, but I'm all about it. I know you are, but you and I have talked. <laughs> We're old, man. It's hard. Well, Sixty-three years old to be out there all night freezing your ass off. Right, right. I've done those things yeah. for years. I just haven't done them the last. I haven't done them the last two years, which are the two best years so far because the El Nino and the rain and the low pressure. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, exactly. so someone mentioned GoPros, or a couple of people mentioned GoPros. The issue with GoPros is, is you have to remove the battery and then replace the battery, and then you lose connection. We can't lose connection on the water. There are some other cameras called D, D, G something or another. I've been looking at. Um, there are also another pretty penny, but they will they will connect to an outsource for power. And um, I have an outsource of power here on the boat. Um, I have big batteries and generators and so on and so on. So that's what that's we can't use GoPros. GoPros are not the thing. We can't do that. Plus, so, but there's a, there's got, there's another way. And like on. Dave said, we're looking at um, getting with our sponsors and seeing if they can help out if they want time on the water with us. So we'll get it. Yeah. And you guys, there's so many people watching this every single day. You guys know people. You guys all know people. You know production people. You know people. If you stopped and thought about it for a minute, we're on. I can show whoever wants to see the numbers. We were averaging 20,000 live views a night on the show. And some nights we got up to 100,000 live views. And we were getting an extraordinary amount of live views. If you got a product, you think about it. You go to try to, try to buy a Google ad that's going to get in front of 20,000 people in a month. And you're going to go, whoa, I had no idea it cost that much. Well, Captain Dave... And Justin 
and Pablo and Al, we can get in front of millions of people in a month for you. So there's a bunch of companies out there and there's a bunch of your friends out there that have the ways and the means to make this happen. Our guys, Pablo, Justin, and Al are going to be fishing either way. You want to watch it live? Your company, one of your friends want to get involved in this? It'll change their company. I promise you that. It'll change their company. You have no idea. We're sitting on a powder keg here. By next year at this time, your saltwater guide's going to yeah. have well over a million followers. It, it it can't not happen, gang. We're like a freight train running down the tracks right now. And uh, the the people are climbing on so fast. And you can watch the numbers grow, right? What, Justin? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I will guarantee, I'll guarantee everyone that when we go live on the water, it's going to change the whole world of fishing. I promise you. You're going to actually see what we do and everything, the whole nine yards. The thing, the things you will not see is the technical stuff, which you're going to find at your saltwater guide. You're going to find current and stuff like that at your saltwater guide. You're going to find all this other really nice stuff that will get you on the fish at your saltwater guide. But you're going to see us on the water, fishing, what we're doing, and everything. And that's why also I want to get. I, I'm looking at getting a good camera so the quality is really nice instead of this fuzzy stuff like you're looking at right now on my video. Um, instead of this fuzzy picture i want to get something high quality maybe not 1080p but maybe 4k then and, and that would be really phenomenal and then also there's other there's other things i mean if, if you're a if you're someone that has product and you would like to sponsor the um starlink and stuff like that there's things that we could do we can put stuff on the deck to support your brand and everything else we could put put stuff on the boat and also we we're thinking about doing a tier factor also so depending on how much you're willing to pay a month for the Starlink for a, a sponsor um, would put you at a different tier of how much we talk about the product and how much we enforce the product basically. Um, so it, it's going to be a really cool thing. We're going to do it no matter what. Um, it's going to change the world of fishing. I guarantee that. I guarantee you. I'm all I'm all about going live on that route that Riviera. You set that stuff up on the top of the bridge. You can see everything. Yeah, exactly. They can yeah. see all the big old blow ups and everything. The whole nine yards, boy. <laughs> we just need we just need Yeah, somebody. it'll be really cool. We just need somebody to step up that's got deep, deep pockets because this isn't free. When you're streaming live, you're eating up the, this the is gigabytes a and the Ter terabytes like you can't even comprehend and like justin's show going live for five hours that would have cost us tens of thousands of dollars with uh starlink because we're just chewing through they you only get so much that's why when you go on someone else's boat or whatever yeah you can use their phone you can text message but they ain't streaming live video for five straight hours or six straight hours it's gonna be it's a big number we need a we need somebody with deep pockets that wants to get involved and help us out let bottom line justin and i we don't have the pocket we don't have the we don't have it so no hey and you know i what don't i don't cool? have i honestly don't have the money for that i don't i don't have the money for it but um real quick mike lewis um no if i don't believe in the product you're not getting mentioned period i have to believe in it i have to use it and if it works i will say it if not i'm not going to say it Thing because then it's going to come back and bite me in the butt. It's going to bite Dave in the butt. It'll bite Al and Pablo in the butt. Afterwards, oh, you got to use the pink fluorocarbon. No, it doesn't work. You have to use clear. So stuff right. like that, we, I won't. Are you guys going to have <laughs> some of go. this? Are you going to yeah. have some of this at uh, Bass Pro Shop? Uh, it's not available yet, but we will have it to show. It's not going to be available until May 1st, but there's more stuff coming down the lines. Um, I was just filming with um, pro, those of you that follow Promar. You've seen them filming on the back of my boat the other day. We were just filming some new product that no one's aware of yet, and we're not going to mention, but uh, there's also more stuff coming down the lines with Promar. Um, it's it's going to change the world of, world of fishing. And that, that's why we're saying no lie we're going to change the world of fishing. Dave, Pablo, Al, myself, and Sonny, we're changing the world of fishing this year. 
on the live videos, on everything. Yep, May 1st. Yeah, you know what would be really cool is have a camera facing both ways. You know, when you pull up to them big foam pits, you got you switch to that camera, and then you're trolling and getting bit in the back, you switch to that camera, or both. That'd be rad. Absolutely. Well, yeah, so they make this more. camera that is uh, – yeah, they make this camera that you can hold a switch, and you can turn it to face different directions. And then you can also zoom in. So you can zoom into a foamer and then look over to watch you get hooked up. You can fly a kite and zoom into that flying fish flying out into a foamer or flying out into some puddlers and right. get nailed. Right. It's it's all this great stuff that's coming down the line. I don't want to talk about it too much, but it's gonna be it's gonna change the world of fishing, I promise. Bill Great. Barney. Hold on. <laughs> Bill Barney, you're watching right now. There Every single human being that's watching this show right now would love to see you live on the beach fishing and talking about it. And Mike Lewis, the thing about what we do is we it's there's no editing. You guys watch Justin all season long. You knew when he, you knew the nights he had fresh bait and you knew the nights he didn't. And most of you got to learn as he was going over 60 trips. You were like, huh, he's pulling hardly any. You don't have you don't have fresh bait tonight, so that's how that whole guide thing or that whole product thing goes. Can we stand behind? A, we don't do any editing on these live shows, so if we're telling you to use something and all five guys are dropping it down and they're not getting bit with it, that's not going to look real good for us. I mean, the proof's in the pudding. So when Justin drops five of these rock cod squirts down to the bottom. And every one of his people are winding fish up. Or Pablo drops five of them down and they're all winding an owl. All of a sudden you go, okay, those things work. Or Bill Varney standing on the beach and he's throwing out his uh, soft-shelled sand crab on his the hook that he likes to use with the little tiny weight that he likes to use. And he's bringing in a surf perch or a Corvina every cast. We can't hide it. We can't pretend that we caught it on this and did it on that because we're live. That's why it's so beneficial to be live. There's no editing. When I first started doing it on my skiff up in Dana Point, I was out there on my skiff going, look, I'm fishing. And I'd put my camera on the dash and I go, look, I'm fishing calicos all by myself and I'm live and I'm fishing and there's no editing and people are going, oh, this is boring. No, this is fishing. It's uh, boring for, and then all of a sudden it's just seconds of just absolute, mayhem and then back to boringness for another four or five minutes and mayhem when you get the bite and we've all seen it but nobody understands it if they've never done it before that's why this live thing is so cool so we would love to see bill varney fishing live on the beach there is not one person here that doesn't want to know how you're doing it on the beach bill we got to get you a camera mounted on your head your telephone mounted on your head while you're surf fishing that would be spectacular Al, you got a great idea. How cool would that be to see that foamer and then flash back to the flying fish skipping across that foamer and getting bit? All this stuff could happen, but you know what it takes? Epic amount of money. <laughs> epic amount of money that us yeah. as fishermen, we don't own that. We don't own that epic amount of money. That's why you don't see it anymore. No, no. And that's why we, like, right now, why I'm at the boat, where there's obviously a ton of wind, and I'm not going out this week at all because of the weather. But <clears throat> the reason why I'm at the boat right now is I'm doing some maintenance on it. I'm doing, I'm reteaking my wood or redoing my wood. It's why we don't have a bunch of money. We do the repairs ourselves to save money <laughs> because otherwise we wouldn't be able to afford it. And if it doesn't look good, it doesn't look good. It'll be all right. It looks better. <laughs> yeah, Jay, just to keep that thing you're sitting in shiny. <laughs> yeah. What? I said just to keep just <laughs> shiny is expensive. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Well, Justin, yeah. Pablo, Al, thank you very much for being a part of the show. We ran over again. People had to go back having their lunch. Al, let them know one more time your phone number. You guys, call these guys now. Don't wait. Call them now. Get on the list. Get on whatever. Figure it out. Get these chartered. Get these guys booked up because they're going to get booked up without you. 
go yeah, out. My, my number is 619-800-3474. Pablo? Fernandez Charters, 619-431-3070. And then Justin. 951-703-9400. All right, you guys, check it out. We're going to be back with you tomorrow. Supposedly, Justin's going to join us. I guess there's a Bass Pro Shop opening on Wednesday night or something like that. I don't even know anymore. Or Thursday. But I got the guys <laughs> calling me right now, the the manager. He's, he wants to be on the show tomorrow. Hopefully, I got Justin and him and Steve or Ben from Promar tomorrow. We'll have a great show for you tomorrow regardless. And then uh, we'll touch base with Al and Pablo, but they'll definitely be back with us on Monday. The three of us will be going full born. And tonight, all of you that are VIP members of my website, we have that big VIP meeting. If you haven't got an email about it, or if you want to be a part of this VIP meeting tonight, Justin will be there. Pablo will be there. I don't, well, maybe Pablo. I haven't even asked him yet. But Justin and Al will be there. And, uh, I'll be there. Tonight, Tonight, Sonny's going to make a guest celebrity so, appearance. We haven't seen him for a while, but Sonny's going to be in the VIP meeting tonight. If you guys want to be a part of the VIP meetings, there's a there's a special VIP part of your saltwater guide. We don't really we didn't let a lot of people in on it. It was a it was a closed deal thing, ten people, and uh, I'll open it back up. If there's any interest, give me a call nine four nine three seven four zero seven eight six, and it's just a uh, round table. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a Zoom meeting. Well, no, it's a Zoom meeting, not kind of. It's kind of like a Zoom meeting, but it's a Zoom meeting where you <laughs> sit around and talk to, talk to the guys and you get to get a little more inside, a little more intimate. And uh, we'll be doing that tonight at 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So thank you all very much for watching the show today. If you're not a member of the website and you're feeling all this love and you just don't quite understand what it means, call me. I'll give you a free – absolute. Uh, it's free. There's no way for me to get into your bank account. I'm going to give you an absolute free look like I do. Every single member gets a free look before they buy. I'll give you a free look. You can see what all the love's about and why there's so many people that are involved with this. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you, Justin. I'll see you guys soon or tonight. I'll see everybody tonight except those of you that aren't VIP.